Okay. Okay, Doki man. Okay, Stampy. <laughs> um, Ren. <laughs> Ren. <laughs> um, we're, let's talk about Gillick competence and data uh, collection. And people are like, what? Genomes. They probably don't understand what just came out of the mouth. 100,000 so. genomes project. There was 100,000 kids. Yeah. Now we're talking about children. People are like, what? Mm-hmm. Kids. What are you talking about? So the the British government and their healthcare system, uh, being a part of their genome project, want to study essentially genomic development over time so that they can get better health outcomes for their population. But it's an interesting thing here. So the parents, in order for that study to occur for this, this genome project, the parents have to consent on the child's behalf. Mm. Apparently the child can't think for itself. Right. Now, question is, though, what happens when the child gets to the Gillick age or Gillick competency? So in the UK, that's at age of 16. They consent for their own treatment because the, the government feels they have enough intelligence and competence to understand and fully appreciate what's involved in that treatment, which, frankly, isn't always true. But in this project here, there's something interesting about this data collection. What if it's a mentally degenerative disease or it's autism? does the Gillick competency still count at age 16? Even though the person may be considered in some respects an adult. Right. You know? So it, does that threshold still work? How does data collection work then at that point? Do the parents continually have to consent for this person through their entire life? Well, I, I, I mean, I want to talk about this in a, a vast, so I was telling you about this off air, is it's kind of look at it in different industries like Twitch, Zynga, mm-hmm. Activision, Blizzard, you know, call of these guys that are making Call of Duty and and Candy Crush and all that. I mean, like Twitch. I mean, majority of their users are probably under eighteen. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, or a high percentage of them. So, so you're looking at you know you're collecting data from children all if, day, all day, no matter what it is. So, is it okay in the game world, but it's not okay in health data? It's health data because it's seemed to be more personal. It's our it has to do with our bodies. I think it depends. So, you know, when I've, I I've been thinking about this, and what data are you collecting from? Like, is Twitch collecting? Is it is it being creepy and finding out where the kids are actually at? Yeah, you like see, is yeah. it catching geo data? So obviously, it's, it's tracking IPs and stuff. What's interesting? Uh, how is that data going to be used? Yes. How are you going to store it? You know, are you going to sell it to anybody? Are you going to keep the research private? Are you going to keep it anonymous? Or is there is there an ethical issue selling underage data? If we want to call it underage data. Is it because mean? you're selling on their behalf? Like a kid can go around and like do chores or what yeah. the hell are they called? Yeah, chores was no, no. What's, what's the word? How do you get paid like for this stuff? Oh, for chores? Yeah, allowance. The allowance, yeah. Like a kid would get an allowance for doing some work around the house. But he's choosing to put in the work. Right. So it's an interesting question. Like, at what age, if someone's putting in the work to generate data, even if it's not personally identifiable, should they still have the right to sell it? Should someone have to choose for them? Do they have to wait until the Gillick competency of age 16 for them to know what's going on? I don't know. I literally don't know. But Yeah, because, you know, a 13-year-old playing Call of Duty... He thir- know, uh, first of all, the 13-year-old knows he's shooting somebody yes. in the game. Right. The, the idea, the objective is to kill. But I'm talking about around, like, the voice recognition patterns, collecting the voice of them talking, you know, because they're obviously talking to each other, collecting the geodata, collecting, you know, um, how fast they're hitting their thumb buttons. Oh, yeah, that's you true. Know, the, yeah. You know, to make the games better. I mean, they're collecting that data to see what users are. But those kids are 12, 13, even 10 years old playing, right. like, Xbox Live and stuff. So but what happens when you sell but, it? But the, here's the thing. They're making a choice in a game to virtually kill someone. Mm-hmm. Why can't they make the choice in their real life to sell their data? Yes. Or even choose to share it through this genome project. I, I think, I think that there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of a contradiction here. Yeah. Because they call it collecting longitudinal life course data. Yeah, longitudinal. That's right. So whenever you're looking at like, and what they're really talking about is like families that are affected by rare disease or mm-hmm. cancer, um, and then being able to, like you were saying, watch the genome sequence, you know, as, as the, as it matures, as the disease, disease matures in every part. And there's, to me, I mean, if I was a, if I, if it wasn't causing stress to my child, yeah. I would be, I would volunteer for this in a heartbeat because not only, not only, 
you know, am I helping? I have the potential to help the child, but then I can have the potential to help, you know, multiple children around the world because this data is important data. It's super important. That genomic research is so, so important. And I get, yeah, like, I mean, there's my, here's my point. They're saying that the age of 16 for this Gillick thing, but if a kid's on Call of Duty or yeah. spending extra money on Candy Crush for some sort of NFT, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or choosing to shoot people in a video game and having a conversation about it and socializing. I mean, the, the conversations I've heard them on Call of Duty. Yeah, I mean, like, it's like an eight-year-old kid being, fuck you. Yeah, like, like <laughs> let's not I be... I mean, it's, it's, it's not... Let's not be naive this here. Isn't, this isn't clean shit. This no. is what you would see in C-17. So, yeah, this is my point. The, the Let's not be naive here about competency. Yes. I think that the age is actually much lower than what this Gillick standard is actually saying. So, I think the so, parent would only have to consent in the genomic sense for, right. I don't know, tell the Call of Duty age. <laughs> that's, so, that's probably the way I look at that. I thought this was very interesting in this debate because they said there can be deep divisions of opinion between a young person with a health condition and their parents. Sure. Some may feel that their health condition, this is the article, adds to the richness of their character and they would not wish for it to be analyzed scientifically any further. Wow, some may kid, wish that kid I would have never even put that together myself. Some age. may <laughs> wish that they had more information about the condition, mm -hmm. whether a cause or potential treatments can be identified. I would say that would be ninety percent. Yeah, obviously anybody. Uh, there's got to be a small percentage of. So I, I know me as a child, and you know this. If 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 I was diagnosed with something, I'd be like, I don't want any scientific. You know, this is who I am. This is. Yeah. People are not comfortable with anomalies. No, they're not. Never have been. No. Very few. And here's the interesting part. I want you to tell me how I cure it, but I don't want you to analyze me. What do you want? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? You know, and it's tough. Uh, and I'll tell you this. I don't have some life debilitating disease. I've never been in that scenario. I'm not a part of any genomic research study. So I don't know. I'm just looking at this from a third party, but I find it interesting the fact that you're refusing analysis because you're identifying with the disease, but the thing is you want to find a cure for it. A mm. little give and take here. Yeah, and it's, it's how you communicate it. You know, I know Correct. Activision, you know, I mean, that's a that's a big... Uh, I know Activision isn't communicating how they... I mean, they probably have it in their privacy agreement, but it's it's probably not. That would be fun. We'll have to do a show on Call of Duty privacy. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the people would love that one. But, um, you know, I don't I don't... I don't think they're very, I don't think they're interested or the teenager because of maturity level. The, but I mean, adults do the same thing. They just skip over it and click all the time. They don't even look at it. So the kid will do the same thing as adult. All they want to do is get into the, the match. Game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do I really care about all this? No, I just want to get into and play. That's why I spent $80 buying your software. So is it, so my question would be, cause I could, I could get this. If the researcher and the participants and the parents were in a room together and the researcher went over the aspects of what they're going to sign, like human to human. Yeah. Bro. Yep. Yeah. Like, and then said, Hey, here, down. here, here's what's going to happen. Here's how your, your child's data. Here's how the data is going to be used. We're going to get some information. You mom, dad too. We'd like to collect your genomes, you know, so we could see maybe this was anomaly from, you know, generations or I'm just making shit up. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but I'm not a doctor, Jim, <laughs> Jim <I'm not> a <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I could see that human to human going over the privacy agreement. I'm all in. Yeah, that that makes I th sense. I think I personally think a 16 year old. You could go to a 16 year old and say, "Hey, you have these degenerative disease. We'd love to do this. We're gonna go over it. as long as the." To me, the only I wouldn't be worried about the 16 year old having the competency. I'd be worried about the researcher, yeah, not trying to take advantage of them. That's what that, I think. That's that's half the issue. Yes, you see they, what I'm saying. They can very easily for take profit. Advantage. Yeah, yeah, for profit. Yeah, saying, oh, okay, teenagers, let's use you. It's just an interesting thing. I mean, like, when did you become cognizant about making your own choices? But Like, but, you tell your mother, mom, dad, I want to play soccer. Yes. How fucking old are you when you say something like that? Yeah. You make, you're you making your own choices yes. at that point? Right. So it's like, I don't think this guilt competence thing is, like, even legit. Mm -mm. Does the child appreciate the value of playing soccer? Of course. It brings them joy. They know exactly what the game is. Does the child know what they're doing when they're playing Call of Duty? Of course. Right. Yeah, I think I, I think it's I think it. I mean, I don't want to get too philosophical, but I think it's this whole helicopter parenting thing, and yeah. which was really cool. I mean, side note, this was awesome. I, I was listening to a guy. Whether you agree, disagree, doesn't matter. This is neutral. I disagree. Uh, I disagree. Yeah. yeah, this guy was. Uh, he wrote a book about how safe the world is actually, mm -hmm. and so he has a daughter, and he lives. He's a psychiatrist. He has a daughter, and he lives in New York, 
and she's nine, and he lets her walk around New York, go to the bakery, go get groceries if she wants, all by herself. Yeah. She has a phone, you know, but, and he's like, she, people are like, where's your parent, you know? <laughs> but she'll go and buy shit in the store and do stuff mm -hmm. and comes home and she went for a long walk and had, and, he, and people are just like, oh my God, I can't believe. He goes, it's actually really safe. It's a lot safer than it's ever been. People hyperinflate data on like child abduction and all mm -hmm. that other stuff beyond reason. That child abduction is way down. Now, I'm not talking about child molestation. I mean, no, we've no, all no, had no. some I'm talking weird about dude in the bushes. Is like, some, hey, dude. Yeah, like the same probabilities will occur for a child walking across the street to get hit by a car and a full-grown human being. Yeah, I, I would think there'd be more of a chance of the child getting hit by a car than any abduction. Then an abdu the abduction would be really rare. This is, my, this is my point. You got 16 and a half million people or whatever it is in New York City. <clears throat> yeah. So then your probability of being abducted is down to here. Right. Yes. Just depends. Percentage-wise. Statistically, yeah. you know, depending on how many people are in that area. And most people, I mean, w w when an accident happens or something goes down, you have a, a percentage of people that actually, you know, s run and help, try to help in some way or call 911. So people in general, humans in general, whether it, it's it's health data or whether it's it's uh, teen, I mean, how many children are teenagers? Let's, we'll stick with teenagers. How many teenagers have done amazing things where they saved somebody's life, pulled somebody out of a burning fire? You're correct. You know something? I think we have this this perspective that all of society is bad. Yes. And mm -hmm. that perspective, there's so much data telling you that it's not, but you tend to think that it's bad because of how people project it to you. But if it was truly bad, we would have nuked ourselves into oblivion. A long time ago. There'd be an increase in severity of terrorist attacks. There would be more police brutality. There would be more riots and gang violence. Like that stuff would be out of control. I mean, we have 300 and how many million people in the United States? Yeah, but there'd be, why aren't we having a terrorist attack every day? Yeah. There'd be more credit card fraud. There would be like people just be storming into your home. Like there are, there are fundamentals. The greater majority mm -hmm. are positively oriented. The yeah, data it, just shows you that. The what, world exists because of that. Well, we have a developer who lives in Pakistan, right? Correct. And I could go, let's go to some place like deep south here in the United States, like Louisiana. Yeah. Be like, I have a developer that's from Pakistan. And, and their first response would be, well, he's a terrorist. No, he's not. <laughs> but but the city, we saw it. Lahore, Pakistan. Is is like a metropolitan city here in the United States. So it, it's phenomenal. It's, there, there's and, and those people are living their lives. Just false perspective. It, it's all false it's perspective. skewing the data. And so when I look at this. It's bias skewing the data. Probably a majority of the people that would use this data would do it for good and not abuse it. There will always be a small amount that do screw things up. But that stuff gets totally disproportioned. Yeah, just don't give it to the government. <laughs> Google, Facebook. <laughs> well, let's think about just like... Big tech. <laughs> they're not doing it. I don't think they're using it nefarious no. necessarily. They're just using it to, for profit. They're using it strictly in a self-serving self benefit. If That's I can get it. free data and make money off of it, if I can extract... You sure? just have an avocado. It was if, we can pay those, if we can not pay those farmers... And get the avocados for free. But of course they would do that. They would do that. In Their margins heartbeat. increase. Yeah. Their yeah. shareholders are happy. A hundred percent. You know, it just. I, uh, I mean, we're on a tangent here, but I, I want people to, we always have this view, especially when we think of children as it being the world against a child and to be very fearful. Yeah. The, and now we're taking data and we're saying. This is very fair. I guarantee you I could go, to, we could go, you and I could go to the UK. And we know a lot about data. We could sit yeah. down with these researchers. They may have a for-profit bent, yep. but I guarantee you these researchers with these rare diseases are really concerned about solving this yeah, problem. Yeah, if we interviewed every They've given their one life of, yeah, to solve these problems. They went to school to help solve these problems. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? There's nothing nefarious about that. Wow. They may have to use a company, the, a genome company or something like that, that's for profit because that gives them funding. Yeah. So they have to give the data for something like that. But at the, at, at, I'm going to say this, at the end of the day, I don't see a lot of super <laughs> no. mind meld. The guy who's the guy with the big mind. Mega mind? Yeah, mega mind. Yeah. I don't see a lot of him, hymns running around. No, you don't. It's just, I, it's just human nature. And I'll, here, I'll give, this will be my final example. This is, a, this is the last damn thing I'm saying. Um, you can do 99% of the things right in your life. Relationship, work, whatever. But the second you do one iota of a thing wrong, 
everything good you've ever done, people forget about. It's just human nature to do that. We forget so quickly our past. And this is why fundamentally data is so important for our future. That's all I got to say.